Gus Bradley spoke to the media today, told the media what he could about the cornerback position. We know that Dallas Flowers is out for the season. What we don't know, and it sounds like what he doesn't know, is whether DJ Baker, Jalen Jones is going to fill in at that position. Kenny Moore is going to get some spot work outside. They're going to have to be very creative with the way they approach the cornerback spot, and they might go to the waiver wire to get some help. Another thing that was talked about, Puka Nakua. How is Puka Nakua that wide open on that touchdown pass that led to the Colts loss? Matthew Stafford is accurate all day. He was accurate then. Doesn't need a guy necessarily to be wide open, but Puka Nakua being the leading receiver in the NFL, that guy was running free. We know there was a lack of communication on that play. But my question would be, what about the scheme? And so Gus Bradley was asked a little bit about that and what happened on that play. Gus, how you doing? Good, Chevy. Uh, obvious question, so I'll ask you it anyway. W when you've already got a, a young and experienced secondary and you lose a starting corner, how do you adjust? What do you need to do? Right. Well, I mean, we feel pretty good about the, we've always felt pretty good about the youth at that spot. You know, now it's just the experience where we felt like we had to bank knowledge so we're going to take a look at dj and jalen both this week um you know with dj dj is a true pro it's hard right you start for a couple of games and then you're out but his mentality i don't think there's anybody more excited for juju when he made the play in baltimore than dj you know he's uh, very mature and he knows just like everybody who's a backup that you, you could be out, you know, with injuries that take place during the season, you could be up in no time. And you just got to always be ready. So he's in a great mindset. We're just going to take a good look at Jalen, too, and just see this week what, what plays out. One well, quick follow-up. You, you and Ron have both talked about growing pains in the secondary. Is that kind of what we saw in overtime where the miscommunication with a, with a rookie that unfortunately those are things that might happen. Uh, yeah. I mean, I think plus in a moving clock, tough situation, we brought a pressure. Um, you know, I, I'll take some of the blame at that too. We just felt like we had to disrupt him, get him off his rhythm a little bit. And, you know, one of those things could happen. I'm not saying that was just due to youth, uh, you know, but, uh, you know, we haven't put him in that situation yet at the moving clock. Thanks, Gus. Yep, thank you. Nate? Hey, Gus. I know it's obviously a process to get Shaq back into the form he's at this year, but his playing time has gone down each of four weeks. So what kind of goes into uh, just that decision on your part of kind of how much to play him and when to play him? Sure. Uh, I, I think with Shaq, I mean, obviously he wants to play every play all the time. And I think when we sat down and looked at it, we just felt like we're going to, you know, have a plan in mind and kind of follow that plan. There may be more, there may be less reps, but it's based on how we're going to bring him back. And really the ideal thing is, in my mind, is to get him back, you know, sometime November, you know, to where we really have a good feel for where he's at. Now, this last game, usually what we do is EJ plays a lot of bass. And then we rolled EJ in some with Shaq based on the rotation. This last week, there was no base. It was all 11 personnel. So that's why it got jockeyed a little bit differently because of that, just to, you know, to stay on what the plan for Shaq and also to get EJ some playing time because there was no base. Joel? Uh, Gus, does, does Shaq play Mike at all? Uh, I know Sagoon was kind of in there a little bit whenever – so yeah. You're... Right now, we have not trained him for that. Uh, I'm not saying that we can't, can't do that, but we felt like for Z, it was like one or two reps, you know, that he was going to be out. So saying you got the reps in practice, you know, to be his backup, Mike. And so at that situation, we just put Sangu in. JJ? Gus, what's the challenge for Dallas now as a, you know, a guy who's a former undrafted free agent? who got a starting opportunity to now miss, you know, most of this season. Like what's the challenge for him coming back from this? Well, I mean, you, you nowadays you hear people coming back from that and they do well, 
So I think, you know, it, but it does check your spirit. Here's a guy that's got a great spirit about him. You know, he gets his chance. He's starting. He's learning. He's playing some good ball. And then this happens. So I think the challenge for him is to, you know, rehab and, and do everything right there. But also it's a long process. So his spirit is very important. And that's what he has his teammates and us as coaches to help him out through that. But obviously he's pretty discouraged. Um, you know, that it took place, but, um, you know, it, it can happen in games. How did you see him kind of fitting with the responsibilities of that specific cornerback position in your defense? Um, he, he did a good job. I think, you know, Chappie said it earlier that, you know, there's going to be some things that they may have not seen before uh, compared to a, a veteran, you know, that's played a lot of years at that spot. So he was in that process with those other guys, you know, learning the position. He's a talented, uh, you know, athletic corner for us with length. And uh, he was coming along. He made some plays in the game. So you know, I think we were going to be patient with him and just know that eventually we're going to have a guy that could play that position pretty well. So now it's a little bit of a setback, but our feelings are still the same with him. James? Gus, um, you all play a really high number of, of defense snaps just in zone uh, coverages. Um, how do you think that worked out Sunday against the Rams? And maybe what are the, I guess, the pros and cons of, of having that many uh, opportunities, I guess, to kind of feel out the zone? Right. I think there's, you know, we play some zone and we play some match coverage, you know, and we, and in the game, we played it all, you know, uh, you know, he does such a good job. I think with Sapper, we felt like, you know, you know, what, what, what part of the game is it, you know, are we ahead in the game? We knew they had the ability to start fast. They, they were a very, you know, fast oriented team where they could score points early. And uh, that's what we had to withstand was the first 20 plays against them. And I felt like we had the opportunity with third and 11, but we had the penalty and, you know, sure enough, we didn't slow them down and they scored some points in the first 25 plays. And uh, then I thought we regrouped and kind of played better. But, um, you know, I think you're, you're seeing us, you know, our, probably our pressure. I, you know, we did run quite a few pressures. I know some of them were versus the run. But, um, you know, we'll continue to try to mix it up. Raven? And kind of going back to the cornerbacks a bit, with Dallas Flowers out, um, you also mentioned just getting a good look at DJ and what Jalen Jones can do. How big is it to have a veteran in that cornerback group like Kenny Moore who can kind of help guide whoever's going to step into that spot? Uh, I, very important. You saw Kenny on the field. You know, he was communicating with Juju, you know, went through motion and jets. And and, and Juju's pretty sharp now. I, I really do. He is a, a bright uh, athletic, you know, as far as for him and learning it, like if we say, hey, here's some formations, here's what you got in this formation, you know, like a automatic front and coverage type deal. He has no issue with that. Juju is just experienced playing in those situations. So, you know, when those moments occur, I think a guy like Kenny Moore helps him. Last one, Thomas. Oh, the defense allowed 27 first down Sunday, played nearly 40 minutes on the field. Uh, is the plan to keep Kenny Moore at nickel or will the rotation that corner be affected without Dallas Flowers now? I think you'll see Kenny playing both still. You play inside and he'll play outside. What I don't get is you know what Sean McVay is going to do. You know that he stacks receivers, that he schemes guys open, right? Puka Nakua is not a fast guy. He's not terribly elusive. He's kind of a lesser version of Cooper Cup, who McVeigh also created with his scheming. But Nakua, why why aren't you man against Nakua? Why against those stacks, which the Rams run like to perfection, why aren't you doing something different from just zoning out of that? When you zone like that, you gotta you got a guy who's been in the league for as long as Matthew Stafford with an arm as accurate as Matthew Stafford, and you think that's going to stop him? It's not. It didn't. Gus Bradley's got to learn, and he's got to evolve, and he's got to adjust. And hopefully he's able to do it this Sunday against the Tennessee Titans.